Matt Kaplan of Planetary Radio. We're at JPL for something that's never happened before. It's Icy Worlds Day. This is the Dawn Mission Control Room. And so it's like the bridge of the spaceship Dawn. But most of the time, this room is empty. It's a sophisticated, capable robot far away in the solar system, and it's capable of performing functions on its own. So it's thrusting with its ion propulsion system, or it takes pictures or other data at Vesta and Ceres, and so we don't need to be in, in constant contact with it. Matt, what are these blue lights? I can't remember. Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Mark. When the blue lights are on, I think dinner is served. No, well, I thought it was it? our blue light special. <laughs> but, but no, when the blue lights are on, that's when the ion propulsion system on the spacecraft is thrusting. It's a nice indication that our spacecraft is behaving itself and continuing its ambitious mission. And pumping out its own blue light. So that's exactly right. That's Explorer 1. That was the first American satellite, the first U.S. satellite. And here's Voyager, life-size model of Voyager. What's coming up with Enceladus? Well, for Cassini, we have three close Enceladus flybys this year, the last three flybys. One of those will come within 30 miles, flying through those jets and geysers, and get just some fantastic new information, measuring the particles, sniffing the gas, trying to understand this fascinating world that's only 300 miles across. And just to our side here in Von Karman Auditorium is the coolest Enceladus, or maybe any model I've ever seen of a planetary body, because it has geysers. Right, right. It has the four tiger stripes, and out of those come little jets of steam, and you can't help but just want to pass your hand through those, just like Cassini would be doing as we fly through them. That is so cool. While we were at the Icy Worlds event, we got official word that NASA's budget finally includes a new start for a mission to Europa. The Planetary Society spent years working for this in Washington, D.C., and we're told our advocacy efforts made a big difference. After a long, long wait, congratulations are in order. Thank you. I think so. This has been a wonderful day. We've been working on concepts for missions to explore Europa for about 15 years. And today, the NASA administrator said we're going forward to the next phase, phase A as it's called, becoming an actual mission. So the solar panels, the vault location, the high gain antenna, and much of the main body is propulsion. This thing we're standing next to, this mock-up, would seem to be additional evidence of how far along this mission is. Tell us about this. Oh, absolutely. So this is a mock-up of what we call the vault. So the vault would have a bunch of shielding, a bunch of metal that protects the sensitive electronics of the spacecraft, the brains of the spacecraft. This is kind of the skull of the spacecraft, if you like. The most sensitive electronics would be buried the deepest with the most shielding. But of course, the instrument sensors would be out in the breeze, as we like to call it. These dark spots are called lenticulae, which is Latin for freckles. We're really trying to understand whether Europa has the ingredients for life. Water, the right chemistry, and chemical energy that might allow life to exist in its ocean.